Hi everybody, in this video I want to do an example problem involving length contraction. And at the end I'll also do a bonus calculation involving time dilation. All right, here we go. So imagine we have Earth and planet Z. And imagine that Earth and planet Z are at rest with respect to each other, and that the separation between Earth and planet Z, according to both Earth and planet Z, is 100 light years. And let me explain what 100 light years is. 100 light years is 100 times the speed of light multiplied by a year. So the speed of light multiplied by a year is a distance. It's the distance that light travels in one year. So 100 light years is basically 100 times the distance that light would travel in one year. All right, so that's a, that's a, this is a distance. Okay, uh, you might say, well, wait a minute. Planet Z is orbiting around its host star. Planet Earth is orbiting around the sun. Those host stars might be drifting apart or drifting closer together. What about all of that? Okay, those are good questions. First of all, the relative drifting apart or getting closer together will be relatively tiny compared to this 100 light year distance. 100 light years is a cosmic scale distance. All right, the second thing is the drifting speed will be slow compared to the speed that's in this problem that I'll go over in just a moment. Uh, and that's the same not only for the drifting speed, but also the orbital speed. Okay, so let me continue describing the problem. Uh, this dotted line represents the path of a spaceship that's zooming uh, from the left of Earth, zooming past the Earth, and heading toward planet Z uh, with the speed relative to Earth and planet Z of 0 0.900 C. And let's imagine that speed is constant. Let's imagine finally that as the spaceship passes the Earth, the people on Earth measure the length of it using precise instruments, and they measure the length of the spaceship to be 50 meters. Uh, and that's the length according to Earth. And since planet Z is effectively at rest according to Earth, uh, that would also be the length according to people on planet Z, if somehow their instruments could reach this far uh, to measure the length. All right, so we have a series of questions. Um, we know the length of the ship according to planet Earth. We want to find the length of the ship according to the ship. Uh, we know the Earth to planet Z distance according to Earth and planet Z. We want to know that distance according to the ship. Uh, we want to find the duration of the trip, how much time does it take, according to people on the ship, and also according to people on Earth, or equivalently, planet Z. All right, so those are the things we want to know. The tools we have in order to find those things are the length contraction relationship, the time dilation relationship, and we also have this basic relationship between distance, speed, and time. So before we calculate any of this stuff, it'll be nice to calculate this ubiquitous square root factor, square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, because that appears in both of these expressions. And so that'll help, us say, that'll help save us some time. And remember, that's going to come into play whether we're looking at thinking about things from the ship's perspective uh, to Earth and planet Z. Because um, from the ship's perspective, Earth and planet Z are moving at 0.9 c to the left, but from Earth and planet Z's perspective, the ship is moving at 0.9 C to the right. So either way, the speed involved is 0.9 C. Okay, so let's do that calculation. I'll uh, calculate this 1 minus V squared over C squared factor. I've already started that. 1 minus, I need the speed, 0.900 C. I've got to square that over C squared. So 0.9 squared times c squared over c squared. The c squares will cancel, and I'll have 1 minus 0.9 squared in the square root factor. When I take the square root, I get, I'll just write it right here, 0 0.4359. All right, so we need that number. That'll be useful. OK. So let's find the first re get the go work on the first real problem. Find the length of the ship according to the ship. Well, this is going to be a length contraction problem. We know the length of the ship according to planet Earth. We need to know the length of the ship according to the ship. So our first step is to figure out which observer, if anyone, observes the so-called proper length for the ship. Now remember, the proper length of an object is the length of an object according to someone who observes it to be at rest. Well, one way to be at rest with respect to the object is to be sitting on the object. All right, so the people on the ship uh, 
observe the proper length of the ship or if the ship itself observes the proper length of the ship. All right, so we want the length of the ship according to the ship. We want uh, the proper length. All right. What we're given is the length of the ship according to people on Earth. Well, they're not going to measure the proper length uh, because the ship is not at rest relative to Earth. All right, so we need to solve the uh, length contraction formula for L sub P. If we do that, we'll have L sub P equals other length over this ubiquitous 1 minus V squared over C squared square root factor. All right, this other length was 50 meters. We divide by this ubiquitous square root factor, which we calculated before, 0 0.4359. And if we punch this into our calculator, we'll get 115 meters. So let's check. Remember, the proper length should be the uh, longest length in the problem for a particular object. The proper length we got of 115 meters, that's the length of the ship according to people on the ship. Uh, the ship is zooming past the Earth, uh, so the people on the Earth find that to be contracted down to 50 meters in length. Both of those are real lengths. For the people on the ship, the 115 meters is the real length. For the people on Earth, the ship really is 50 meters long. Okay, next, let's find the Earth to planet Z distance according to the ship. Now, the Earth to planet Z distance, according to Earth and planet Z, was 100 light years, all right? Now, that is the proper length. The Earth to planet Z distance is at rest with respect to observers on Earth or with respect to observers on planet Z. So we're given the proper length. In this case, we want the other length, want L. All right, so we can use the uh, length contraction formula straight up. The length is equal to the proper length times this ubiquitous square root factor, 1 minus v squared over c squared. Now, the proper length of the distance that we're talking about, the Earth to planet Z distance, is 100 light years, 100 c times a year. And I'll multiply by this ubiquitous factor, 0.4359. And what do I get? Uh, I'm just going to write it right here. That's going to equal uh, 0.4359 times 100 light years. That'll be 43 point, I'll just round it, 6 light years. And I'll put that, box that with a different color of pen. All right. So, this Earth to planet Z distance is 100 light years according to Earth and planet Z, but according to the people who are traveling on the spaceship, this distance is only 43.6 light years. Interesting. Which, ship, which, which length is the real length? Well, according to Earth and planet Z, the length is 100 light, year, 100 light years. According to people on the ship, the length is 43.6 light years. All right, and we can use that in order to find the trip duration according to the ship. All right, so if distance equals speed times time, well, time would equal distance divided by speed. Now, we got to be careful. We need to use all these things according to the same observer. If I want the trip duration according to the, to the ship, this will be the, the trip duration according to the ship. This has got to be the distance from here to here according to the ship. and the speed according to the ship. Now, wait a minute. What's really happening from the ship's perspective, right, when we do this calculation, is the, from the ship's perspective, the ship is at rest. It's got a coordinate system attached. And what we have is Earth and planet Z zooming past the ship. So at the instant that the sh ship is coinciding with planet Earth, you'd have Earth here. And then later, planet Z will coincide with the ship. So this is the distance that the Earth to planet Z distance is zooming past the ship, according to the ship. And that's um, this distance, 43.6 light years. Then this is the speed, not of the ship according to the ship. The speed of the ship according to the ship is zero. This is the speed that these other things are moving relative to the ship. Uh, that's going to be point. 
900C. And so here's an interesting thing with the units. Here's one reason I like to work with these distances in of light years to write them out as C times a year. I have 46, 43.6 light years. That's 43.6 times the speed of light times one year. But then this 0.900C, that's 0 0.900 times C. So C divided by C is one, and we're left with units of years. 43.6 divided by 0.9 uh, gives us 48.4 years, according to the ship. Okay. Now you might ask, if it's 48.4 years according to the ship, uh, what's the duration of the trip according to the Earth? So when we really ask the question according to the ship, it's how long does it take from the time that planet Earth coincides with the ship to the time that planet Z corresponds with the ship? From the perspective of Earth and planet Z, it's, well, okay, how long does it take the ship to get from here to here? Just two different ways of looking at the same thing from the different reference frames. Okay, so in order to do this calculation, we can do it two different ways. We could either use time dilation to relate this time uh, to the elapsed time in the Earth uh, in the Earth reference frame for the trip, or we can use uh, uh, this method that we used right uh, here, time equals distance divided by speed, and do that in the Earth's reference frame. So we're going to do it both ways. Uh, so first, uh, let's use the same method. We can do the same calculation, but from the Earth reference frame. So time in the Earth reference frame for the ship to get from Earth to planet Z, the elapsed time, will equal the distance from the Earth's reference frame that the ship has to travel, divided by the speed at which the travel, the, Earth, the ship travels, all according to Earth. So this time will be according to the Earth. The distance is how far the ship's got to go according to Earth. And the speed is the speed of the ship according to Earth, all according to the same observer. All right, the distance that the ship has got to travel according to Earth is 100 light years. The speed at which it does so is 0 0.900C. Again, I'll have C divided by C, which is 1, and I'll be left with units of years. And I'll have 100 divided by 0 0.9 multiplied by years, which will be 111 years. And that's according to Earth. Okay. Now let's do this calculation again, but we can do it using uh, time dilation. So let's pretend we didn't do this calculation. We already know the answer, but let's pretend we didn't do this, and let's pretend we wanted to use this piece of data to find uh, the time that it takes for the ship to get from planet Earth to planet Z according to Earth. Well, we need to figure out, is this time here the proper time, or is it the other time? All right, so the time according to the ship, let's imagine which observer uh, observes the entirety of the trip to happen at the same location in their reference frame. Well, it's not Earth and planet Z because the trip begins here. The trip begins with the ship being coincident with Earth. The trip ends with the ship being coincident with planet Z. Those two endpoints of the, of the process are not at the same location. So Earth does not observe the so-called proper time. What about the ship? Well, According to the ship, the ship, the trip begins when Earth is at the ship, and then you know Earth moves, and the trip ends when planet Z is at the ship. So the whole duration of the trip occurs at the location of the ship, according to the ship. So this 48.4 years, according to the ship, is the delta T sub P, the so-called proper time interval, in our uh, time dilation calculation, if we choose to do one, right? Because the the definition of the so-called proper time is the uh, elapsed time according to an observer who sees the whole process and observes the whole process to happen at the same location. That's the ship. Okay, so with that, we can use the time dilation to try and find uh, the time according to Earth. That's going to be, so what we want is delta t, the other time. So we can use the time dilation formula. Delta t will equal delta t sub p over this square root factor. 
Delta T sub P is 48.4 years. The square root factor we calculated before, that's 0 0.4359. If we take 48.4 years, divide by 0 .4359, uh, and work that out on our calculator, we will get a time of 111 years, and you can check that on your calculator. These are the same, so that checks out. All right, so a couple of important points are in order here. First, length contraction and time dilation are sort of a part of some larger whole. If things are strange with length, so to speak, we should expect them to be strange with time because distance lengths, that is, and speeds and times can be all related through this distance equals speed times time relationship. All right, so it turns out in special relativity uh, that space, that is distances, and time are part of a larger reality that we call space-time. The second more practical point is often there's multiple ways to solve a problem, right? So when we, got, when we worked through all of this, we got to this point and we wanted to calculate the trip duration according to Earth, we had two different ways to go. Um, if I had given you all these parts of the problem and said, do them in any order you want, there's lots of ways you might have gone. All right, hopefully that will help everything fit together with regard to length contraction and time dilation. Uh, and thanks for watching.